Hi everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Avishag, I'm very excited to be here. Um, today I'm going to talk with you about dev team metrics that matter. We're going to understand what are these metrics, how we can measure them really, and also what we can learn from them, and how can we optimize our delivery process by start monitoring them now. So before digging into it, I'm going to shortly introduce myself. So I am Avishag, but all my friends call me Vishi. It's shorter, this is my nickname. I live in Israel, Tel Aviv. As you probably hear, I speak Hebrew. This is my main language. So I suffer from accent glitches and also grammar and vocabulary from time to time, but uh, <laughs> forgive me about that. Um, I am a software engineer at Linear B. And on my free time, I enjoy dancing. And I even used to dance professionally um, till I joined the army. Um, yeah, so at 2013, I joined the army in Israel. This is kind of a mandatory thing there. Uh, you have to do it when you turn 18. And I joined the um, intelligence forces. I worked there as a BI developer. And I did a lot of um, data analyzing. Um, of mass of data. Um, I did it for about two and a half years, and then I joined the industry. At 2015, I started working for all, for all scripts, also as a BI developer, but quickly I shifted my career and I became a software engineer there. I developed systems in the healthcare uh, solution uh, world, and I stayed at all scripts for almost four years. So that's about that phase of my life. After all scripts, I joined Cisco. I was working there as also as a software engineer. I developed features for Cisco uh, umbrella in the SWG world. Uh, specifically, I developed uh, features uh, in the backend um, services there and also for the VPN uh, that, we pro that we provided back then. And on 2021, I joined Linear B. In Linear B, I worked as a software engineer, and now I'm also a team leader there. I still, I, like, I, I'm hands-on, so it means that I still do code uh, work. But um, this is a really, really fun experience for me because Linear B is a startup, so I really had a chance to start there when we were very, very little and when we were a very small group of people. And I saw all the process there and it's kind of amazing. And I love to, to work there. So I did my first degree in Israel, in the Ben Gurion University in computer science. Um, this is a very social uh, experience uh, to be a part of. And that's where I met a lot, a lot of uh, friends that are now working as developers as probably you. So enough about me, and let's talk about my friends. <laughs> so in Israel now, the wedding season is on fire. It means that literally every two weeks I go to another wedding and I have to go to that wedding because, because this is the thing there, okay? You just have to do that. So when you are going to a wedding, you always like socialize and you talk with the, all the guests and some of them are friends. Two weeks ago, I went to a wedding of a friend from the university. That means that I met many, many developers, many, many. And when you meet your friends from the university and in general, when you meet like a group of people, for example, like in this event, so there's always this question, so how things go at your work? Like, how is your job? Do you have fun or not? How things are going there? And the answer is always, binary. It's either you are very, very happy or you are very, very sad. So when you hear the answers, it goes usually like that. The sad developer starts by telling you, oh, the benefits are amazing. I love the events and I have a lot of time there playing, I don't know, bowling or snooker or whatever they provide you in the office. But and when the bot starts, it's when you are start to worry about your friend. <laughs> so the set developer actually, in his actual job, suffers a lot from ongoing conflicts that he's not able to resolve because that it's because the team that he works 
on, never like engaged any tool that will help them to resolve these conflicts. He's delivering very, very, very slow. That means that he might be like an excellent software developer and develops all the features and the logic really good, but he suffers from delivering it to production. And he's always uh, has a lot of uh, on calls and pager duties stuff that's going on in production and many, many bad things that just makes him very sad and makes his life literally like miserable. And he's not having fun. And he's looking to maybe, you know, switch a job or something like that. And this is the sad friends that I have. Okay. And the happy developer might not have like a lot of benefits. Like most of the time, yes, because we are in the tech industry, so we know how it goes, but he's happy not because of that. This is not what will keep him in the company for the long term. The, he's happy because he feels that he has a lot of impact in general to the product and to the customers that the that product has. He feels that he works with high quality and high standards. And he also delivering very, very fast because it's not an issue there because they are engaged like many tools to help them deliver fast, right? And they also like have a really stable production environment so he's not suffering a lot from like bugs and issues that goes on prod. So that goes like basically that. And these all are related to what we call the dev experience, right? The DX, uh, why is, uh, the DX, why is, um, um, experience. And it's basically like we saw that there is a deep relation between this dev experience that we provide to our dev teams and their happiness in the company. So that's about this one. And I want you to keep it in your mind. I want to move on and talk a little bit about Dora metrics. Dora metrics, DevOps research and assessment metrics. This is a group of metrics that was actually defined by Google uh, after years of research. And this group of metrics are measuring your performance and your pipeline's health. And it goes to, uh, we can split this metric, this group of metrics into two categories. We want to measure speed and we want to measure quality. Like speed is like how fast you do things and how fast you deliver your code. And quality, obviously, is the quality that you are providing when you are developing um, these uh, new things. So Dora metrics is a group of metrics that help you to really understand what is your group. Uh, and even not a group, even your individual, even you as an individual contrib contributor, uh, you, what is your speed and what is your quality. And the first metric I'm going to show you is cycle time. So cycle time will be the first, the first metric of Dora metrics that measure your speed. Cycle time definition is how quickly your work moves from coding to deployed. And it's, under, it's important to understand this part because as developers, we are not always, our main job is obviously coding, but this is not the only thing that we do, right? We have meetings. We have designs that we do. We have things that are really not measured by coding, but when we want to um, measure the pipeline and our delivery pipeline, we are focusing about coding. So cycle time um, refers into our coding flow, okay? So when we want to measure it, we actually want to understand how quickly we are starting to code and take this code all the way to production. And there are many phases along the way, so I want to demonstrate it with our cycle time. So in my group, in my uh, <coughs> R&D group, we're measuring our cycle time within four phases. So we have four phases, four phases that we are measuring separately. And the summary of all of them together gives me, give me the cycle time. Now, this is a cycle time of an elite team, OK? So this is a really experienced team. They are working like very, very fast. And we can see interesting things here. So first of all, let's understand how it splits, OK? So we're starting by coding. And how we measure it? We're starting to um, uh, measure it from the first commit that we do, right? The first commit, not the first push, but the first commit. Uh, till our, we are working with GitHub. So we are working with pull request, and we are delivering it with pull request. So anyone here familiar with that? If yes, uh, please raise your hand. 
Okay, great, <laughs> awesome. So we are um, measuring the coding time till the moment that we are open a PR that is not labeled as either draft or whip. That means that then when the pull request is mature enough and we, were, we want to deliver it uh, forward to review, this is the moment that we are finished with the coding, okay? After that, we are measuring pickup time. Pickup time is the moment that the PR is ready to review till someone actually from the team reviews it or not in the team, like in general, till, I actu till someone is really actually start commenting it and this whole cycle starts to, um, starts to go. And then comes the review time. Review time, we are measuring from the moment that someone commented on the PR till the moment it's approved or closed in some cases, but till the moment uh, it does. So this, is the, this will be the review time. It, it usually will be like, the review time takes a little bit it's a cycle by itself because you know the review might take like a lot of like um, uh, transitions there between the reviewers and you, and you have to sometimes um, address their comments, and it might take like a little bit more time than the coding itself. And after that, we are deploying. So in our R&D group, uh, we are um, we count our deployments when we are uh, cutting uh, tags. So once we have a um, tag that is ready to be published. This is the moment that we are counting as deployment and we are finishing to deploy it when we are recognized it in production, okay? So this is our cycle time and this is how we measure it. But obviously in many, many other groups or sometimes individually, your cycle time might look a little different. Maybe you have like, for example, a QA phase, a QA phase or uh, some integration phase or many other phases. So it's really under, it's when you are start, starting measuring these, um, these uh, phases and this cycle time in general, you really want to understand what are these phases that you really want to measure. So that was about cycle time. Another metric that is uh, associated with speed, deployment frequency, how often your work is deployed to customers. So this is another way that we can measure our speed. It means that the many, the, uh, how many times we are deploying to production. So if we do it many, many times, it means that we are probably delivering fast and we get, and we are reaching to production much faster. And that means that we are probably um, do this work, the, this coding thing, this whole process like many times and we do it like in high speed, okay? So when this number is high, it means that our speed is high as well. Moving to quality, because speed, enough by speed is not enough by itself. Um, quality is really important because if you are delivering fast without like high quality, it's really like, first of all, it's not good <laughs> because of the obvious, uh, uh, because of the obvious reason, but it's also like can um, impact your speed as well. Um, so yeah, the first thing that we, the DORA metrics want to measure when it comes to quality is CFR, change failure rate. That means that we want to measure how many times, how often deployments results in an issue or a bug. So you know this process when you are delivering and once you are finished and your new service is in production, right away you have a bug, something that you didn't find out before and this is a, an event that we want to measure because it points if we are really delivered with high quality or not. Another thing that we want to measure when it comes to quality is the MTTR metric, mean time to restore. How quickly you can recover from issues. So let's say you have an issue already in production. Another way to understand your team's quality and your uh, development quality in general is to know that once you have an issue, how quickly you can resolve this issue. So if you do it fast, it points that your quality in general is good because you, you probably found the, the issue a lot faster in the code and you understood quickly where you need to fix it and you also like probably uh, fixed it really well because you had a lot of tests, for example. So it points that your quality is high when this metric um, is, is actually low, okay? So this group of metrics again these are the metrics that you want to start measure, and you can even start measuring, measuring them today, and I will explain in the next few slides how you can do it. And these are really important when you, are, when you want to get the, the full picture of your group 
um, performance. And when you, especially when you want to plan like forward to the next quarters and stuff like that. So another thing that's worth mentioning here is the first slide that I mentioned like at the beginning about the happiness of the, your development team. So when these metrics are good, it means that your developers, your, your dev pipeline is happy and also that your developers are happy as well. So keep that in your mind and just understand it when I'll under, I will explain more about it uh, in the next few slides. So another metric, it's not really associated with Dora metrics, but it really affects on all of the metrics, all of this group of metrics, um, is PR size, pull request size. We saw that there is a really deep relation between the pull request size to our speed and our quality. So you might guess that when PRs are small, they are probably, is it like, it, it, it's bad, it's, what's better? Like big PRs or small PRs? If you are a small PR person, so raise your hand. Big PRs, this hand, okay. So you know the answer already and we heard it all before. Big PRs are not good for, good for you and today I'm going to show you our research when we did it and we are going to give you the actual results of our researchers, research, sorry, and that way you will see like really the effect of big PRs on your pipeline. So the first thing we discovered based on this amount of data, so we had like many pull requests of our customers, okay, they are allowed us to do that, of course. Uh, we had uh, 3.9 million comments and uh, about uh, 25k uh, developers. So this is a really like big amount, of, amount, big amount of data. We discovered a really like huge thing here that PRs under tw under 200 changes will probably get merged faster. And the reason for that is, first of all, big PRs are very scary to review. When I get a big PR, I don't know what to do with it. I, I probably will return it back to the developer and tell them, or organize it for me. I, don't, I cannot review it. So probably as a reviewer, when I get a small PR, I will have a much better review as well, right? Because I have a lot of, I have less to review, so everything that I found, I found very quickly, and I have like many comments on the small PRs. And when I get like really big PRs, it's either I'm just returning it back to the developer and like find a solution for yourself, I don't know, go, go handle this thing. Or if I'm like not a, a good reviewer, I will probably approve it right, right away, and this is a behavior that we are not allowing in our r and group. So this is a really huge thing here. So. Another thing we discovered that also reflects your speed is that when, we are, when you are working with small pull requests, you are actually increasing your deployment frequency, right? The other DORA metrics we discussed about. So this is something also that affects your speed and can change really your uh, delivery and also your happiness of your pipeline as well. Now, let's compare uh, two teams here, one that engaged the small PR, um, the small PR uh, approach, and the other one that's not. We can see the relation between these two. So teams that are working with really big PRs have a really big cycle time, like a really high cycle time, while teams that are working with small PRs, not always, this is an average of a week, yeah, but it's not always like that. It, it, tends to be between 20 to 100 code changes, their cycle time will be shorter. So this is something that you have to understand. Uh, this is something that we uh, saw uh, with a lot, of, a lot of data. So probably, I mean, we see this, uh, this trend in many, many, many teams uh, that we um, had research on. So you are probably falling with the same, like, teams and it will also like affect, um, will, once you will measure your metrics, you can also see this kind of difference between, uh, between these two. So this group of metrics 
are the most important ones to measure. And you can start to measure these metrics today. And how you can do it? You can do it by uh, monitoring Webhooks event on your repos and your uh, Webhooks event on uh, your organization. You have like many uh, free plugins that can help you to understand how to, um, to monitor that. You can also like use the spreadsheet or maybe uh, plugins with Jira or whatever product management tool that you are using. And you can also uh, use um, to free tools uh, that are there in the market. Um, for example, uh, Jellyfish, Linear B, Us, um, and so on. So these metrics are worth monitoring. And if you want to understand what's your speed and quality of the team, you want to start doing it now. So you'll have the realization of how your pipeline uh, health is and also how your developers in the group are. Because the, not all the developers will tell you that they are unhappy because, of the, uh, because they are delivering slow, right? They are like on one-on-ones that we do in our, um, in our teams, there are not always these developers that will tell you that. But you as like um, experienced developers as well as like junior developers, you can really see that by yourself when you are starting monitoring these, um, these metrics. Um, now let's say we started already to monitor our metrics. Let's talk a little bit about the most common delivery process. So this is the delivery process we do in our R&D uh, in our R&D group, but it applies for most of the companies as well and most of the individual processes as well. So it goes like that. You start by coding. And this is not the cycle time. This is the delivery process itself. So we start, you start by coding. After a little while, you are finished and you are opening a pull request. And when you have this pull request cycle of review and pickup and whatever, all, 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 of, this, uh, all of this phase, uh, you will merge it. And after the merge uh, part, you will have integration part. But sometimes you might like integrate your code or your features prior to the merge, so it really depends. So sometimes the integration will be before and sometimes after. Most of the time it will be in both sides of the, of the merging phase. And after you're done with that phase, you uh, will deploy your code to production. So when we want to calculate the cycle time in our R&D group, it really it, it sits really perfectly within between, okay? But other metrics that we want to measure will be in other places as well. So CFR, that point on your quality, will be uh, affected by your code and your PR. Because when your code is in high quality and the PRs uh, cycle, meaning the review is in high quality, that will affect the CFR metric, right? Change failure rate. That means we'll have like less issues when we are deploying, when we do these two parts in high quality. Cycle time, as I mentioned, as I mentioned uh, meets us in the whole process. Deployment frequency will uh, be measured when we are deploying things, and MTTR as well. But if we are looking at the whole process, we want to boost it. It means that we want to speed it up. And the way we did it so far, and things that we are familiar with uh, these days are related to the dev experience in general. So we need to keep in mind that our goal is to provide the best dev experience. It applies either you are working in an enter enterprise, any company, any startup company, and even as an open source developer, an individual contributor. When you have a good development experience, you are more likely to uh, to contribute faster and um, in high quality as well. So the way we did it and the way we are uh, um, doing it right now, like in most, in most of the, my companies that I work at, we had the CI CD processes. So for most of us here, we know that by like, it's a given thing for us, CI CD, continuous integration and continuous um, de um, deployment. So these were given to us, but I remember myself uh, when I was working at Allscript, in some teams, literally, we had to copy DLLs, files from the local machine to uh, the servers. Servers. So 
it, CICD was not always here for us to help us automate our processes. So are you always, um, who is familiar with CICD? Okay, great. So we have many tools that uh, help us doing it, Jenkins, Drone, uh, GitHub Actions, uh, and many, many tools like that. And this is really boost up our process, right? From manual things we had to do in the past, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we are now doing it uh, automatically uh, without human uh, mistakes that we might do and a lot faster because this is all automated and triggered by actions or by cron schedule, whatever. So this really helps us in that part, but we see there is a gap there. So there, it's not, all, not, not all the process is covered really with the CI CD. And we see that developers are still suffering from what we call idle time. So let's zoom in, in to the process the code PR merge part, and we'll see that the PR itself, when the pull request is alive, it starts a cycle by its own. So this cycle is split into pickup time and review time. And we see that really, this is re really funny, but the coding itself not taking a lot of, like this is an average uh, data, but it's not um, taking a lot of time um, more than pickup and review. And the pickup and review, it's not, it's not that I'm reviewing a PR for five days, right? This is uh, caused by, who can guess? I mean, you know, this is not interactive talk, so I will tell you the answer. <laughs> so um, this is happening because of the transitioning that we do and the destruction that it takes. We also know it as context switch, as human context switch, right? So in the computer science world, we know that context switch is very, very expensive. And in our process, in our delivery process, is, ex is very expensive. A, because um, this is number one time cons uh, consumer uh, in the process, as we can see in the data. And B, uh, developer uh, working hours are very expensive. So this is really something that we, can re we want to reduce. And this is not really a work. This is a really, a, a most, of it, a, most of it here, is actually an idle time that we want to optimize for the developers, okay? Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is the common process and we want to resolve it by getting into that part somehow. So how can we boost this uh, idle time? Um, we can start doing it by understanding that not all pull requests are the same. So we have small pull requests and we have sometimes big pull requests that we cannot like um, do it other, do otherwise uh, for that matter. But we want to understand and we want to somehow categorize them and give more context to the reviewers. So this is just an example. This is more of a concept um, that pull requests are, can be split into risks categories. For example, if it's a really small PR, uh, only uh, readme file changes, it will be probably l in low risk. But when you are changing some security definitions or some, um, um, I don't know, environment variable changes and stuff like that, it might be a little in high risk. So you want to somehow to understand it before you are really opening the PR. And this is what we call SCM. So along with CI CD, we are now giving you the CM, the continuous merge. Now this is not a product, this is not a tool yet, but this is more of a concept, okay? It's a, it's a new concept that we want to uh, engage in our process and we want to spread the rumor about it. So continuous merge along with continuous integration and continuous deployment will provide a full uh, cover on the whole delivery process, okay? So we now have this continuous merge. We don't know yet what it is, but if we'll have an automation right there that can boost up the speed of the idle time uh, phases, um, it will really affect on the whole delivery itself and the whole, pr and the whole uh, process itself. And it's even more uh, effective because this is the beginning of the process. So if, we, if, we'll split, if we'll boost it up, we'll affect dramatically the whole process in terms of like speed. So this is very interesting and some, something to keep in your mind. So 
continuous merge refers to the pull request lifecycle. We are really are talking about pull requests here and the coding part of our job and not the, the other parts uh, that we do. But um, this is really uh, something that we can start engaging and do j just start engaging it to our processes. So as a concept, we have two ways to do it. So either we are going to get our pull requests just more attractive to review, and we can do it by really um, deliver small PRs for review. And not all, everyone are really experienced with that, but we saw that a really good tech design prior to the coding itself can really affect it. And when you are working what we call in micro tasks, in, instead of like big tickets, instead of like big stories that you want, you want to promote and you start coding right away, if you have a really good deep tech design for it before, you are more likely to create and work uh, in small uh, tasks and small micro tasks. And in that way, you have uh, in general, um, uh, you are, will be more likely to deliver uh, small PRs for reviews and to the pipeline itself. And this is one way to do it. And another way to do it is uh, to somehow get your pull request um, attractive by automations. So you, you have like many tools and many plugins of, uh, hey, I opened a, a PR, please review, something like, like bots and stuff like that, that you can engage to your processes right away. And a lot of them are free. So feel uh, free to reach out to me after that and I will tell you uh, what are these. And this is a, the, the first way. So the other way is to automate your actual merge. And this can be done by defining rules to each repository because each repository has different personality. Each repository and each project can be treated like totally different. It depends like on the business that it holds inside. So if we'll def define some rules to each repository, we'll be able to automate our merge and not all, only merge, but we can automate it um, any kind of process. For example, in our R&D group, we defined a, a rule that um, in our uh, specific uh, big repo, we have to have at least two reviewers. And if we're changing a code in that uh, security file over there, it's called um, security file.py, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll have to uh, automatic, uh, it, it's automatically assign the, um, uh, someone from the security team as a reviewer, automatically, without us, without the developer have to do anything with that. And these small things really matter because this is five minutes there and 10 minutes there and, and in scale, in like in big maze of, uh, of uh, developers, it's a lot of time. So these two ways are, are a way to, to engage the, the, CM, the CM approach. So here I'm going to show you a few examples of how we did it. So in Linear B, we are doing a dog footing. That means that we are using our own product. So we have this uh, bots that, for example, if we have small pull requests for review, you know, this uh, small pull request of only bumping version, bump version, blah, 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 bump, Axios, whatever. For this kind of pull requests, we don't want to waste a lot of time. So our, we are uh, sending right away a request, not to a channel, but to individual, when we are looking for uh, immediate approval. So once a reviewer will, will see it right away without having to click on a link and go to GitHub, he can see it right away. He can approve it from Slack without like, having to do anything um, or have any concerns about the pull request that he might get. So this is an, an, uh, one example. Another example that we are uh, engaged, um, sorry, estimated time to review. So when we are asking for someone as, for, from someone's review, uh, we are actually attaching by an AI algorithm we developed uh, how, how long we are estimating this review might take. So this gives us, gives the reviewer a little context and he knows how to plan his day. So he knows that if it's two minutes review, I'll just go ahead and release this PR and help my uh, friend and make him happier. And if it's a longer review, okay, so I need a, a, an appropriate time for it. I will just block it in, a, in my calendar and go, on, and go on. So this is like two examples of how we made our pull requests more attractive to review. 
And in another way uh, that we are working on right now, we call this uh, solution Gitstream solution. So this is the um, uh, automated uh, categorization that we are trying to develop for our pull requests. And we are doing it by a set of rules for each repo. Uh, this is the, I don't have like an appropriate example here, but we have definitions of rule in YAML file for each repo. And we have it also like in org level. So we have this default rules for the all orgs and we have um, rules for each repo that uh, are really um, like, um, like the example I, give, I gave before. So if, for example, we are changing only um, markdown files in some of the paths in the repo, we be able to get auto approve or auto merge. Um, so this is about that. And in general, we are uh, here to make our world and our dev experience just better whatever and wherever you are working on, either you are individual contributor or working in startup or enterprise. And dev experience is like the most main things to start investing to provide the best like way for your people to work. And just keep that in mind. So if you have uh, like any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think there are no questions, right? So, do we have a question? A quick, a quick talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Just and the question is, uh, how does how do these metrics particularly relate to developer happiness? Because uh, I, I I understand you said that the healthy pipeline ensures happiness, but I uh, is it just correlative or causative? Oh, sorry, the last uh, sentence was? Uh, is it uh, like a healthy pipeline, does it essentially mean happy developer or are there other metrics so that we have to for capture? Develop de yeah. For develop, uh, developers' happiness, it's not a really one thing. This is like a combination of many, many, many things, right? You have the benefits, you have the social uh, environment and the team uh, environment. You have um, the setting, even like for some of the developers, the setting is really important. But dev, uh, we saw that, like in our uh, field, that dev experience in general uh, affects on the developer happiness. So think about it: uh, when you are working in scale and where you are working like in a multi-repos um, project, and we are working on many, many things you want to focus on the features that you want to deliver and less about the nonsense like uh, around it. So you don't, uh, you don't want, for example, to treat a dev a stage and production environment differently. You have this environment variable that you set up somewhere and you automatically um, uh, feed it to, 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 to your uh, machine. And this is one way to reduce the noise the developer has to handle with. This is, by the way, the jobs, like the job of the developer most of the time, or the DevOps. But this is all related to things, to small things that just make his, the developer's life just easier and therefore happier. So yeah, if that answers your question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>